What's up guys? Welcome back to another daily Bible reading snapshot. Today we're looking at Psalm 34 and 35 here in the Old Testament. And Psalm 34 is a famous one because it says that we should, as we think about God and what he's done, we should taste and see that the Lord is good. We shouldn't just think about the goodness of God. We should hopefully experience the goodness of God in our life. And he recounts some things that are important for us to remember. He says that for his own life, David has sought the Lord and he has answered. It says he's delivered him from all of his fears. Those who look to God, they're radiant. Their faces shine. And the faces of those people will never be put to shame. It says the angel of the Lord encamps around the people who fear him. Which again, what does that show? It shows when we fear God, God is good to the people who fear him. And that's not some prosperity gospel. That's just the truth of trusting in God and God taking care of us. Not always giving us a million things and making us rich. That's not the point. But certainly we'll be taken care of, even spiritually taken care of, when we look to God and we see his goodness and we fear him. We recognize who God is and we respect him rightly. And we are afraid of dishonoring him. We live in a way that's pleasing to him. It says also um, that our response to all of this is that we should um, see that God is good and we should learn the fear of the Lord. So there's this section of almost like teaching where David says the people who recognize that God is good and that they fear the Lord, they should teach other people to fear the Lord. It's super important for us to see here. Chapter 34 verse 13 says, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. And at the bottom of the page, in verse 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. So there's so much here. It's kind of a big range of things we see here. But the idea is God is good to his people. So as you read this, think very carefully about your life. And I want you to think about the good that God has shown you in your lifetime and how God has been good to you. Because even though your life might not be everything you want it to be, you should recognize that God has been good to you. Everyone can recognize that. And those who are in Christ, they can recognize it even more because God has done something miraculous in you. If you're in Christ, God has saved you from the penalty of your sin. Not just that, but he's also taken you out of the slavery that you once were in to your sin. You had to sin. You were always doing sin. But then God released you. He gave you freedom from that. So there's so much to praise God for in your life if you're in Christ. So that's chapter 34. Psalm 35, a different psalm here. It talks about how good God is, and it's continuing that theme. But also, one of the things that we see that's interesting here is a lot of people are slandering David, just like we saw before. They're being, They're happy when David falls. They're clapping when, when David makes mistakes. And sometimes it feels like that. Clearly, I think David's not exaggerating. I think he's telling the truth. There were people in his life doing that. But maybe in your life, it feels like there's some people that always want you to fail. They want you to mess up. They want you to um, sin. They want you to get in trouble. Whatever it is, David directs his focus back to God, as he always has been doing. But something interesting here, um, he asks for vindication in verse 24, which I think is the big idea here. But he also says, let those who delight in my righteousness shout for joy and be glad and say evermore. This is what I want people to say if they see my righteous behavior. I want them to say, great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servant. Then my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and your praise all the day long. Now, David says, I want to be righteous, but I want everyone who sees my righteousness, I don't want them to say, great is David. David is a great guy. David's a righteous guy. His response is, I want them to say, God is good. God is great. Um, great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servants. He wants people to look at his life and praise God. I want that to be a thing that you think. When people see your life, I want you to make it a, a point to point people to praise God for the good in your life. Because a lot of other people uh, might not look at your life and say, wow, God has been good to you. They might say, you're a very lucky person. Um, you're lucky you were born in that family. You have a good education. Your upbringing was good or whatever they say. You're, you're talented at this or talented at that or you're musical or you're artistic. And that's just whatever. That's just the amazing gifts that you have. Well, I want you to direct their praise to God for those things and say, yeah, that's because God is great. God's been good to me, but it's because he's good, not because I'm good. So that's our Old Testament reading today. Hopefully you can think through that pretty deeply as you read those passages. Um, today we're looking at 
Acts chapter 22 here in the New Testament. And Acts 22 is this speech that Paul gives to these people. Remember, they're the people who gathered yesterday in the reading who were creating a mob around Paul in Jerusalem, in the temple. They're not fans of Paul here. And Paul tells them his testimony. He says, guys, I was just like one of you. I grew up around here. I was born in Tarsus, but I was raised here, really. I was instructed by Gamaliel. I had all these experiences. I was a Jew of all the Jews, but God saved me. And here's what he did. And he gives his testimony, which is basically Acts chapter 9 repeated to us. It's been a long time, so make sure you don't just gloss over this. And then what we'll see is the Jews got angry at this when he started pointing it towards them, because that's really what he does here. Um, he says, um, at the, towards the end of the testimony that Paul gives of his own life here, he says, there came a point where God said to me in a vision, you need to go to the Gentiles and preach to them, because the Jews are not listening. And guess what the Jews said at that point? They got angry right there, because it turned from this story about Saul, Saul's life, right, Paul, turned from that story to their story. And that's when they didn't like it. And it's just interesting the pattern we see here. We should be good at telling other people the testimony of how God saved us. So if you've never told someone your testimony, you never even thought it through, I'd encourage you, think that through. How did God save you? Now, when you use that in conversations of evangelism, make sure you use it, but make sure you get to the point of, well, what are you going to do about this? So a testimony is good because it gets us in the door, so to speak, of evangelism with a lot of people, but it's not the gospel. You need to present the gospel to them as well. And that's what Paul starts to do. And once he starts to do that, they get mad and they don't want to listen. So again, use your testimony for the good of evangelism. Use it. Um, tell people how God has saved you and tell them they need to be saved as well. So that's a helpful thing to think through. If you never thought it through, make sure you think it through today. So we'll see you back tomorrow for another daily Bible reading snapshot.